We've all been there. You're standing in a museum, staring at a painting, and all you can think is, I don't get it. To me, knowing the story behind an artwork is a huge part of knowing how to look at it. I'm Amanda, the host of the Art of History podcast, where we view history through the lens of some really great works of art. Each episode, we dive deep into the bigger picture behind some familiar and maybe not so familiar pieces. Check out Art of History now wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, Culture Kids. Before we begin our episode, we have a very special announcement. We are thrilled to share that Culture Kids podcast has been nominated for the Webby Awards under the Family and Kids General Series category. This means that we also have a shot at winning the People's Voice Awards, and this is where you can help. If you love listening to our episodes, please take a minute and vote for us. Asher and I are independent podcasters going up against big networks, so we really need your help. We would love to have a chance to win this for all the other independent solo podcasters and creators. You can find the link to vote on our show notes or on our website at www.culturekidspodcast.com slash vote. As always, thank you for listening and thank you for being part of our growing community. And now here is our latest episode. Culture Kids, welcome to our brand new episode. My name is Kristen and I am your host along with my son, Asher. Hello. Is your birthday coming up? <gasps> if it is, submit your birthday so we can all celebrate it together. We have listeners from all over the world, including Germany, Korea, Iran, Brazil, so many more. I can't list them all. Let's have a global celebration of your special day. Our first birthday celebration is Ellen Pack. Happy birthday! From your Belinda. Happy birthday, Ellen. Ellen wants to travel someday to Greece. Ooh, that's a beautiful place, and I'd like to visit there someday too. That's wackadoodle. For today's episode, we're going to explore a type of music that Mommy has been listening to since she was a kid. Oh yeah, Mommy loves music. Jazz, hip-hop, or classical. And K-pop. Oh, K-pop is short for Korean pop music. You got it. But it's popular music that comes from South Korea. All right. It's not just pop music, but it refers to a wide range of musical styles such as hip hop, R&B, electronic, rock, and much more. It's usually very catchy and a lot of K-pop music has very high energy. Yes! Yes, K-pop songs are usually sung in Korean, but many artists use English too, and sometimes other languages. Even though K-pop is a big range of different styles of music, generally, K-pop is upbeat and has really cool music videos. K-pop groups often have many members with complex dance moves. Mommy spent many years growing up in the 90s practicing popular K-pop dances for fun. (laughs) So today we're going to go back in time and learn about a Korean band that started it all. It's not what people think. Yep, these days there are very famous K-pop groups that everyone in the world knows about. Like BTS! Yeah! And Mommy also likes Blackpink. Black pink in the area. <laughs> yep, even though now everyone in the world listens to K-pop and is familiar with popular bands like BTS and Black Pink, we're going to learn about a Korean singing group that existed many, many, many years before Mommy was even born. I think it's very important that we learn about this group that helps shape what we know K-pop to be today. It's the... The Kim Sisters! Hey, my whole family's last name 
is Kim. That's right. Kim is a very common last name in Korea. Oh yeah, like how we know several families here in the United States have the same last name as our family. Huh? Yep. No matter what culture or country, there's going to be multiple groups of families with the same last name. Hmm. Anyway, let's dig a little deeper into who the Kim sisters are and why they're important for the world to learn about. The Kim sisters was a Korean American musical trio. Oh, meaning there are three people in the group. That's what trio means. Exactly. The group consisted of three sisters named Sukja, Eja, and Minja. They were extremely talented and could sing and play multiple instruments and dance. That's a lot of skills. Uh huh. They were popular for a long time, but became famous in the United States around 1950s to 1960s. Mommy has been watching and listening to lots of music that the Kim sisters performed, and wow, they are very talented. And you can tell they worked so hard to build their skills. So the three sisters were born in Korea, and before they spoke any English, they listened to a lot of American music. So they could learn English. Oh. Yes, I can relate to this because when mommy was little and moved to the United States, I learned English by listening to music in English and watching TV in English too. The three sisters started to perform around United States military camps. These military camps are where American soldiers stayed in Korea. They are also known as military bases, and it's where members of the United States Armed Forces lived and worked. This is where they trained and did important military work. The American soldiers really enjoyed the Kim sisters' music, and they went back home to their country and started talking about how good their music was. So word soon spread about the talented trio of Korean women, and a famous music producer named Tom Ball flew out to Korea just to watch them perform. Groovy man. A music producer is a person that helps create and shape the sound of a song or album. They help people get famous. They do. Music producers play a very important role in creating and shaping the music that we listen to every day. So the producer offered the Kim sisters a short four-week show at the Thunderbird Hotel in Las Vegas. Fancy. I've been to Las Vegas too. It's like four hours from Playa Vista. Yep, and it's a big deal to perform at some of their hotels there. At the time, though, the Kim sisters were still teenagers, meaning they were big kids. They were very excited for the opportunity, and also during this four-week contract, not only did they draw a crowd, but people loved them. Everyone loved their music talent, and at the time, their style was new and special to the Las Vegas music scene. Not only did they have a beautiful voice that blended together so effortlessly, they played about 13 different instruments on stage. Eh, I can't even play one. <gasps> yes, so they are very talented. People like them so much that they went on to play in Las Vegas with sold-out shows for over 35 years. <gasps> Dude. They eventually came so famous, they were on big shows in America. There was a popular American television show that aired from the 1940s to 1970s called The Ed Sullivan Show. The three sisters were on The Ed Sullivan Show over 20 times. Oh my gosh! That's a lot! It has been recorded as the most performances and the show's history. Now, this show is a big deal. Famous performers such as Elvis Presley and the Beatles have been on the show. Oh, thank you very much. A lot of people think that BTS was the first popular K-pop group that has been recognized in the United States, but that certainly is not true. The Kim sisters paved the way and is the first ever Asian group to record music in the United States. Cool, I love that. 
What does the Kim Sisters' music sound like? So the Kim Sisters were known for their harmonious vocals and skillful musical performances. What does harmonious vocals mean? Mm-hmm. Harmony in music is when two or more notes are played or sung together to create a beautiful sound. It's like when two friends sing a song together and their voices blend nicely. Oh, so harmony is different from melody because melody is the main tune or notes you hear in the song. That's right. Melody is like the words of a story, while harmony is like the colors and textures that make the story more interesting. So cool. Here's an example of some harmonious chords. <sighs> That does sound nice, but what's not harmonious? Something like this. Oh yeah, that does not sound good, and definitely not harmonious. So the Kim sisters were very talented in creating harmonious vocals. They sang in English, Korean, and sometimes in other languages. Oh yeah, like K-pop today. Exactly. They often perform covers of popular songs from the 1950s and 1960s. Covers are when someone takes a song and they put their own style to it. Totally righteous. Exactly. They also took traditional Korean songs and arranged them with Western styles of music, and they played instruments like guitar, piano, xylophone, and many more. Their music was lively, catchy, upbeat, and they helped popularize Korean music in the United States. Sometimes they wore hanboks too, and hanbok refers to Korean traditional clothing. And also back then in America, not a lot of people knew about Korea and what a hanbok was because there weren't that many Korean people living in the United States. So the Kim sisters introduced Korean things like hanbok to many Americans that listened to their music. And years and years later, K-pop has slowly transformed to a popular genre of music that is enjoyed by many people around the world today. One thing that has not changed about K-pop is that it's usually upbeat and makes people want to get up and dance. Yay, party time! Come on, let's dance! Woo! Well, you know, we never end our episode without some jokes. You go first. What kind of music are balloons afraid of? What? Pop music. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Hip hop, pop. Okay, I have one. Go, go, go! What kind of music do rabbits listen to? Yes. Hip hop. <laughs> I get it. I had to do another one. Okay, fine. You can do another one. What do you call a group of cows singing together? What? A musical. That's a cute one. I love that. Well, that's all we have for today. If you love our episodes, there are many ways you can get involved to be a part of our show. Not only can you share your birthday celebrations with us, but you can also reach out and let us know what you want to learn about next. Please visit our show notes for more information. We're always here for you. Stay tuned for more fun episodes with special guests coming up. See you later, alligator. Bye, rabbits or hip hop. Bye.